Time is in his hands. Hallelujah. Time is in his hands. Beginning and the end. Beginning and the end. Beginning and the end. Beginning and the end. Sing out great, out great. Out great. Is our God sing with me? Our great is our God. All will sing, all will sing. Our great, our great is our God. Sing great is our God. we thank you for you are great for you are a great God 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 Rabba Baba Baba Hendelebo Roseriba La 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 Hendelebo Le Kalalaria Rosa Kendelebo
we are glad. We are glad. Did you do my depart the name of the Lord? Yes. Everything he has done. Was every tool uh, the Lord is doing. We are glad. He restored her. He restored breakthrough. He restored the blessing. We are glad. Somebody tell him we are glad. In this place, we are glad. For the greatness of God in our midst, we are glad. We are glad. For testimonies, for good things, we are glad. That we are returning back home in peace, we are glad. Somebody pray to God, talk to God in hours in the name of Jesus. They pray the name of Jesus. We are glad. We are glad. The Lord has done something for us. No more weeping, no more, no more pain, no more agony. We are glad in the name of Jesus. We are glad. We are glad. We are glad. We are glad. Every battle is over. We are glad. We are glad. Not in battle, not in pain, not in any agony, not in sickness, not in pain. Not weeping over children, no weeping over ourselves. We are glad. We are glad. The Lord has done it. He has done it. Our journey back home. We are glad. Everything we are doing today, it's a piece of joy. It's the fruit of the things of God's joy. We are glad. In the name of Jesus. We are glad. We are glad, Lord. We are glad. We are glad. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before end of this year, somebody will still have such things of joy. Amen. Before end of this year. Amen. If somebody who blesses, you will still have things of joy coming up. Not only will you be glad, even the people who are watching will be to say, God has come Has done great things for us. We are glad. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. That's right. And in between the north and the south, yes. the Lord has made us glad. Hallelujah. He healed us. Yes. He restored us. Yes. 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 Right where we are, the journey back home is peaceful. Amen. It is full of calm. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Everything left to be done today is under cover. Amen. Under cover of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So that you say thank you. Thank you, Lord. So you and you alone. Yes, Lord. We commit everything. Amen. We surrender all to you. Amen. We say, Father, take over all. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We finish joining as yes. we are about to kick off from the south. Yes, Lord. Lord, let it be orchestrated. Amen. 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 Let your angels fire the tire on Amen. Amen. Let your angels go ahead of us. Amen. Amen. And clear the crooked path. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shout to me as we made it. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah, in Jerusalem. Hallelujah, in Jerusalem. Hallelujah, in Jerusalem. Hallelujah, joy. Hallelujah. at a very big wall it's not looking very impressive right now but don't forget it starts in the corner right there you see mm -hmm. and it goes north far this way all these buildings are actually leaning on that wall the length of this wall is almost 1500 feet <coughs> and the original was built by Herod the Great 2,000 and something years ago. The stones at the lower levels where the people are praying are still the original stones built here more than 2,000 years ago, still support the whole thing. Now what's going on here? When Solomon builds the temple, he built the temple up there, probably where the Golden Dome is today. The temple was destroyed. The Jews come back, they rebuild the temple in the exact spot. Even when Herod rebuilds the second temple, it's in the same spot. Why? What is important? Why this spot? Out of all the mountains in the universe, why the temple was built? Shh, I'm talking. <laughs> why the temple was built here? Anyone knows? No, you tell us. Someone does know. What is the original name of this mountain? Mount Moria. Ah. <laughs> Isaac. <laughs> Mount Moria is very famous because this is the mountain that Abraham. I'll rephrase that. When God turns to Abraham and says, Take your son, your only son. Your beloved son Isaac and sacrifice him to me on the mountain I will show you. And he forced Abraham to walk with his son. We have to move. Okay. God, God forces Abraham to walk three days with his son, knowing that he's going to kill his son, just to get to this mountain behind him. Now, the fact that Abraham built the altar up there, put the wood and his own son on the altar, holding the knife, this is an act of ultimate faith. Just by, for doing that, this place deserves a great honor mm -hmm. huh. because of the act of faith. faith yes. But I want to make sure you fully understand mm. how much faith was involved here. Mm. Killing your own son is a huge, huge thing. Nothing can be more than that, right? But think about it this way. Years before, many years before, God and Abraham made a deal. What was the deal? You will follow me, do exactly as I say, and in return, I will make you a great nation. 
Now, how old is Abraham when God tells him to take uh, Isaac? Hundred and something, hundred and fourteen. Well, how old is his wife? How many sons do they have? If he will kill his son, it's not just killing his son, it's killing God's promise. How can you do this to me, God? We made a deal. How can you tell me to kill my own son, of course, but your promise? And even though it's very obvious that God tells him to kill his own promise, Abraham is still doing it. He's willing to do it. That's how deep and big the faith was. And that's why this place deserves a great honor. But I want to take you a few steps even further back. With why? Why God shows Abraham this particular hill behind me to do that? Why not Mount of Olives over there? Or Mount Zion over there? Or I don't know, Kilimanjaro? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Why this hill? What is so important to God Himself about this hill? You know my simple answer, right? No, no. In this case, it's not an idea. <laughs> it's a very, very ancient. Tradition. Sorry, but again, that's for you. So I had to answer. The tradition that the Jewish people have for many, many hundreds, if not thousands of years, is that when God created the universe, even if it was for a split of a second, something had to materialize first. And that something happens to be a rock. Mm. And that rock happens to be on the top of this mountain. Wow. It is such a powerful ancient Jewish tradition that when the Muslims conquered this land 1300 years ago, they adopt the Jewish tradition. And when they build this dome, how do they call it? What is the name of this dome? The dome on the rock. The dome of the rock. Because it's built above the rock that is the foundation of all creation. For does the Jews that, and for the Muslims. Can I ask you, does that tradition predate Abraham? No. It cannot predate Abraham because before Abraham there was no Jewish do, people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just trying to figure out. Even after Abraham there was no Jewish people. It was the Israelites. Yeah. A different yes. story. Anyway, this is the pen. The point is that the source of power of this place is that this is the beginning of creation. Look at it this way. The earth is the center of the universe. The land of Israel is the center of earth. Jerusalem is the center of the land of Israel. The Temple Mount is the center of Jerusalem. And that rock is the center of Temple Mount. Not physically, spiritually. Hmm. The heart and center. And God loves this place so much that when he turns to Solomon, he says, you shall build my house on that rock and this shall be my house and your prayers will be answered the temple is not a gathering place it's not a worship center it's the house of god almost a physical presence of god on earth but not everywhere in the temple and now I want to move back to King Herod the Great. When King Herod the Great builds the whole mountain, 
And the wall that you were looking at is the western wall of the mountain. Remember, the retaining walls of the whole mountain. On the top, he builds a huge structure, the temple in the time of Herod the Great, three times bigger than the, the dome that you see today. Just the temple, not including everything around it. Now, Herod wanted everybody to marvel his job, his work. So everybody could go up to the top of the platform and walk around and enjoy the beauty of the structures, of the buildings and above all the temple. But if you wanted to go to the temple itself, in the heart of the whole thing, there was a low fence and signs in many languages. From here on, only Jews are allowed. All the Gentiles had to stay out of the zone of the temple. And the Jews, they all gathered on the east side. Remember the eastern gate I pointed out? They gathered around that area. It was a big open courtyard. It was named the Women's Court, because everybody could be there. And then the Jews start to move from east to west. At a certain distance, there is a gate. From here on, only men are allowed. Women have to stay back. The men move forward, moving west, until they got to a staircase. They had to stop. Men cannot climb the staircase, only priests. The priests come down the stairs and they take the animals from the men. Only priests go up the stairs and beyond the staircase, that's the big open area with the huge slaughter area, slaughtering house, and the... Uh, uh, um, um, Sacrifice center. Okay. In a the court. altar. Altar court. The altar. Okay? And only priests can perform the act of actual sacrifice. By the way, on the staircase you have the Levites playing music and sing songs of the glory of God. Behind the slaughter area, that's where the actual building of the temple used to be. Okay? So even the priests. They go further west in the area to enter the closed building of the temple. And when they go in, they go into a room called the Holy. And they have all kinds of ceremonies they have to do in the Holy. But even the priests, as they move in the Holy, further west, there is a curtain. What's behind the curtain? The Ark of Covenant. Let's first talk about the name of the place. The Holiest of Holies. The Holy of Holies. Yeah. Who can enter the Holy of Holies? High priest. Yes. Only the high, high priest. priest. When? Once, Once a, year. a year. Which day? Day of uh, Atonement. Day of Atonement. The holiest day in the year for the Jewish people, even today. Now, why only the high priest and one day a year? Because it's almost a physical presence of God on earth. Nobody can go and face God. Even the high priest, as he goes in, they put a lot of smoke into the house, into the room, as if God is hiding in the smoke. And the high priest has to be 100% pure, heart, mind, soul, and body. If not, God will kill him. Yes. <laughs> this is how holy the Holy of Holies was. Presence of God right there. What's in the Holy of Holies? Ark of Covenant. Let's ask again. What's in the Holy of Holies? Ark of God. Presence of God. Okay, I see I need to go back to history. <laughs> in the year 586, the, the minus, the Babylonian armies destroyed the first temple, the Solomonian temple, that stood here for almost 500 years. What do they do with the ark? We don't know. Mm. So the ark was only in the first temple. In the first temple, oh. yeah. So what's in the second temple? Well, what's in the second temple? I don't know. You tell us. <laughs> the answer is nothing. The room is empty. Wow. There's nothing in the room except for the presence of God. Mm. Wow. By the way, where is the ark today? We don't know. Well, it depends whom you ask. Something. Utopia. Some people believe 
it's in Egypt. Okay. Some people believe it's in Ethiopia. There is a church in Ethiopia. Yeah. They claim that they have the original ark, uh -huh. but nobody is allowed to see. Mm. But they claim they have. <laughs> Some people say in Babylon, which is Iraq. Yeah. A lot of the Jews believe it's actually hidden under the Temple Mount in caves that will be revealed to us when the Messiah will come. And it's still here. But I can tell you a little secret. I know where it is. Where is it? It's in my heart. It's in my heart. It's no more a secret then. No, 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 no. I really know where it is. Tell us. It's in a very big warehouse in Washington, D.C. Ah! <laughs> Your bar! <laughs> you didn't see Indiana Jones? It's no more a secret then. <laughs> <laughs> we were waiting to hear your serious answer. <laughs> Very nice punchline. Watch the movie Indiana Jones again. Indiana Jones and the Lost Ark. Yeah, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> okay, back to being serious. Okay. Yeah. There is nothing in the Holy of Holies. Mm. And then in the year 70, the Romans destroyed everything. They destroyed the temple itself and the Holy of Holies. They destroyed the walls around the temple. They destroyed all the structures that Herod built on the plateau. And they even started to destroy the walls that supported the whole mountain. They were pushing huge stones from the top of the wall that was much higher to the ground that was way below us, by the way, back then. But halfway through the destruction of the walls that supported the mountain, they stopped. Now, according to the Jews, on that day, the Spirit of God moved from the Holy of Holies to the nearest thing that survived the destruction. The Romans did a great job. The only thing that survived are the retaining walls of the mountain, not even of the temple, of the mountain. And since, if you remember, we moved from east to west, it so happened that the western wall of the Temple Mount, that starts in the point right there, and ends again 1,500 feet on the north, is the closest wall to the Holy of Holies. Ah. So Jews believe holiness never left the western wall of the Temple Mount. Amen. Ah. Now, for 2,000 years since the destruction, the Jews are longing for the temple to be rebuilt but until then at least we have the stones of the western wall but what happens is the jews did not control this place for nearly 2000 years other people control this area the romans didn't care about this place christianity left it in ruins why christianity doesn't build the temple again or at least the mountain because they prove Jesus right. There is a prophecy. There shall be no stone left upon the stone. Uh. They rebuilt the city, but not the Temple Mount. It was only the Muslims that came in the 7th century. And they are the ones that rebuilt the walls. And you see the low, smaller stone in the middle and top. Mm -hmm. This is from the Muslim time. They rebuilt the walls of the Temple Mount. They rebuilt the plateau that Herod built first and built the Golden Dome and the and Aqsa Mosque over there. Why the Muslims are interested in the Temple Mount? I'll ask you this question. Do you have any idea how many times Jerusalem is mentioned in the Quran? In the Holy Muslim book? That's the right answer. Zero. Zero. Not even once. So why are they interested? So why are they interested? Who cares? We think it was a political thing. Yeah. It, because of political pressure between different groups of Muslims, the group that controlled these areas wanted a source of power. It has to be a religious source of power. Huh. So they read a story in the Quran. I'm going to quote the whole story. It's going to take me 30 seconds. Okay. okay? One night, the Prophet Muhammad left the central mosque and moved the mosque on the edge. He went to sleep. And that night he was taken up to heaven, and in heaven things happened to him. Eventually God 
proves that he is the chosen one before Jesus, before Moses, before Abraham, okay? Or David even. He is the chosen one. He goes back to earth and goes home. That's the story. So the Muslim said, the mosque, the central mosque mentioned is in Mecca, the holiest place. But the mosque on the edge is the temple mountain in Jerusalem. It doesn't say so. It's only a tradition. But that's what they decided. And that's a very, very important thing that happened in Islam. This night journey of Muhammad. You also need to explain how did it happen in one night from Mecca all the way to Jerusalem. They say he was riding a winged horse called El Burak. And nothing about it in the book. It's a legend. Thing is that the mosque on the edge is Jerusalem. And because the night journey was to Jerusalem, to the Temple Mount, this turns this place to the third holiest site on earth to Islam. And that's why they rebuild it and build the mosques on the top. Okay, and since the 7th century, this place is holy to Islam, third holiest to Islam, first holiest to, to, to Judaism, and the most holy place for Christianity is 400 meters this way. The Holy Sepulchre. Mm. Now you can understand the situation here. Yeah. Uh -huh. The holiest place for the three major monotheistic religions. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the Muslims rebuild it, but the Muslims are the ones that decided what happened. So first, the leaders built palaces on the south side here. High palaces that were destroyed later, but they were here. Many years later, other Muslims, they built this neighborhood that you just see the beginning of it. This is part of the Muslims' quarter, leaning on the wall from the center to the north to the north it left only a small section of about 200 feet from the center to the south for the jews and for hundreds of years jews that wanted to come as close as possible to god which means the wailing wall the temp the western wall this is the only area that they could come to and it became the holiest place on earth for the Jews until the temple will be rebuilt. Why do we call it the Wailing Wall? Because what the Jews are doing here for more than uh, 1500 years, for almost 1900 years, they wail, they cry upon the destruction of the two temples. Which, by the way, according to the Jewish culture, they were destroyed on the same date in the Jewish calendar, not in the same year, but in the same date in the year. So they cry and cry and pray that the third temple will be rebuilt sometime. Creation so far. Now, if I'm a Jew and I truly believe this is as close as I can get to God in the whole universe, I would like to live here. But you can, you must have a life. So a tradition developed, if I cannot live here, Maybe my prayers can. That's why people write prayer requests from God. And they shove it in the cracks between the stones. And this is now going to be your opportunity to do the same, if you want. Uh, because it's the holiest site, it's like the synagogue, we have to follow the Orthodox Jewish culture. Which means men and women must be separated. Okay. Women go straight down here. Men go around. But they have a bigger area. And the opposite from the church, you remember, men must cover it. They have the yarmulke at the entrance. Um, first of all, does anyone need a piece of paper and a pen? Or you all have your own? You all have your own. How much time do you think you need? Two hours, five hours? Fifteen minutes? Yeah, 15. 15? Yeah, it depends on how close we can get to. So now it's 9.30? Yeah. At 9.45, please come back here. Okay. Okay, I'll be there. Sorry, before you go, can I share it? This one came here. Yeah. And she wrote a prayer point. And she duplicated it. And she told me that everything that she asked God for, 
from that thing has come to pass. Amen. And at least I'm a part of, I'm a witness of some of those things. I don't even know everything she wrote, but she told me that everything that she wrote, that it was included that when I thought her son was going to do her his exam, that he knows that he doesn't have the ability to get the grade that he wanted, but he asked that God, he tried to go follow me, and that boy came out with two more. Amen. So and let's go with the faith, faith, knowing fully well that our prayers will be answered in the name of Jesus. So, on the way to the Wailing Wall. Release the prayers.
Sobre a minha família, Senhor, estou clamando a Ti, pela família da minha esposa, o Zaqueu, a Luzilda, a Karina, a Beatriz, o Miguel, o Fábio, a Joelma, o Fabinho, Senhor, também o Andrew, Deus, o Fabiano, a Vanusa, a Stephanie e a Laura. Que toda essa família se abençoe. Senhor, eu coloco as minhas mãos sobre este mundo. Que a partir deste dia, assim, tudo quanto eu colocar as minhas mãos seja próspero. Tudo quanto a minha esposa colocar em suas mãos, as suas mãos seja próspero. A minha casa e a minha descendência serão prósperos para a glória de Jesus. As glórias de Deus Pai, para a glória de Deus Filho e para a glória do Espírito Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you for hearing our cry, for answering all our prayers, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for answering every single prayer request that we brought to you today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord.